1994, Roger Golubsky put an innocent man in prison for 23 years. There was nothing to tie me to this crime. Nothing. And it wasn't until 2017, when that man was exonerated and a list of murdered women appeared, that people in power started to realize how deep this story went. For decades, Roger Golubsky used his badge to exploit women, and it was an open secret. The common refrain was, well, that's Roger being Roger. But there were people in Kansas City, Kansas, who tried to sound the alarm. It's just that not enough people listened. Not enough people listened. As you see the story about Roger uh, Golubsky, uh, KCR Studios and NPR's Midwest Newsrooms uh, put that together. They have a, a podcast called Overlooked, and they're talking about this multi-layered life of crime that Roger Golubsky, detective in the Kansas City Police Department, uh, was living straight up. There's lots of uh, uh, reputable accusations against him, uh, but actually, let's look at the one that he's facing currently, because there's a whole bunch. Let's look at what he's talking about now, which has him in the news again. Prosecutors allege that former detective Roger Golubsky, Cecil Brooks, Lamarck Robertson, uh, Roberson, and Richard Robinson were all involved in criminal activities lasted from 1996 to 1998. That's according to an announcement of the grand jury indictment by the Department of Justice on Monday. Brooks allegedly provided a location at an apartment building in Kansas City where young women were held. Here's some details, there's some graphic sexual assault language here about what happened, so be warned. Brooks, Roberson, and Robinson all allegedly used physical beatings, sexual assault, and threats to compel young women to provide sexual services to men. The detective, Golubsky, who's now 69 years old, allegedly accepted money from Brooks, provided protection from law enforcement, and forcibly raped a young woman whose identity was not revealed. And in exchange for his protection, Golubsky collected cash from Brooks and was allowed to, quote, choose girls to provide him sexual services. That's what the indictment alleges. One of the victims told authorities that she was just 16 years old when Golubsky pulled her hair, choked her, and raped her. Golubsky, the detective, has also been previously charged with civil rights violations for allegedly acting under the color of law to commit aggravated sexual assaults between 98 and 2001. After this whole thing in the house where they were trafficking young girls. He also faces a maximum sentence of life in prison on those charges. That's according to a September announcement of the indictment against him. Golubsky has pleaded not guilty. Of course, to those charges, but there's more though. Golubsky, he retired from the Kansas City Police Department in 2010. He was also connected to the wrongful imprisonment of Lamont McIntyre back in 1994. The man you saw at the beginning in that video there. At the time of his arrest, McIntyre was 17 years old. Here's Trisha Rojo Bushnell, she's a, a, the executive director of the Midwest Innocence Project. And she broke down the disgusting nature of this part of his past from 94 before the, uh, the sexual trafficking and protecting criminals in a house raping young girls. Then that was also before then he went after um, more uh, sexual assaults, aggravated sexual assaults for the next three years of his life, his career. Let's watch what he did then. Lamont was framed because a detective named Detective Roger Golubsky, who was on the force for over 30 years, who retired with honors, still draws his pension today, has never had any accountability, uh, raped women, black women with impunity for those 30 years. And one of the women that he sexually assaulted was Lamont McIntyre's mother. And when that happened, it happened in the police station. Another police officer walked in, saw what was happening, shut the door and walked out. She reported him, moved, changed her phone number to get away from him. He continued to harass her. And so fast forward in time, when it comes time for him to cover up a murder, because this cartel knows who's committed this murder and they're profiting from it. When it comes time for him to cover up this murder, he makes a photo array of five people, three of whom are Rosie McIntyre's relatives. He did not care who he got, but he got someone that hurt Rosie. So. Through this investigation, it takes 10 years uh, because the community understandably doesn't want to talk about what's happening because it's dangerous. But now we've talked to over 100 women who have been sexually assaulted by Detective Golubsky and others. He's not the only one. A relentless uh, predator and monster out on the streets for that long committing those crimes with many people knowing about it. Jeff, I keep hearing about bad apples. This was a detective. This was someone who was high up in the organization. And when people caught him doing the dirt that he was doing, it was just Roger being Roger as we heard from the top. 
Well, thank you for mentioning the bad apples thing because when people say that, they always mention or forget to mention the fact that a bad apple spoils the whole bunch. And that's exactly what happened here. In order for him to do this for the amount of time, for the amount of years that he did this, it had to take the cooperation and cooperation of a lot of people that weren't just him. It wasn't just him. And he's a monster, sure. But what do we say about the other people who knew what was going on and didn't do anything about it? Also, let's be clear, his targets appear to be black and brown women. I would say he did this because he thought no one would care and they were easy targets for him to get away with this for as long as he did. He destroyed a lot of people's lives while he moved up in his life and legacy and his career. And other people were either put away or suffering unjustly because of who he is as a person while other people let him get away with it. Uh, there needs to be questions for people who talk about back to blue and there's just one bad apple. And also, these are the same people who talk about human trafficking, young girls being kidnapped, being taken and held and captive and then being raped continuously and then sold off and all these things. All of those things happened under oddly a police officer's watch. In fact, his protection of it. Are we gonna start saying we need to start clearing some of these folks out? We need to have a full on investigation to clear all police departments from these types of people. People who think they're protected by their status and their position, cuz he felt that way. In fact, his attorney said, we're gonna get by these ridiculous charges, something along those lines and denying all of them. Cuz that's what they're supposed to say. When are we gonna, when are you gonna actually back up what you say you're so upset about? But again, as you said, Jeff, they can't back it up with that because oh, those are black and brown women. We don't mean trafficking those folks, those aren't humans. But they'll push back anytime someone says Black Lives Matter. Because we already know that. Oh, maybe you don't.